It was a wonderful sunny day. A blonde girl named Lucy was playing with her two friends in her home's backyard. They wouldn't stop asking her about her birthday party, which would be celebrated pretty soon. She would boast proudly about how great it was all going to be. A lot of friends would come, the cake would be red velvet with four layers, and she would be using a beautiful blue dress. A car stopped at the entrance and Alex came out of it, Lucy's young personal steward, carrying her new dress. He looked at the girls with resentment. He hated his job. And he hated receiving orders from a spoiled child. Lucy rushed towards Alex, asking him to let her try out the new dress. With a forced smile, he said that her mother didn't allow it, but Lucy just kept on insisting. Completely fed up of it all, Alex decided to execute the plan he had been preparing for months. He walked Lucy to her room so she could try out the dress, while he waited outside. A while later, she came out and flaunted her new dress proudly. When she was about to go show it to her friends, Alice grabbed her by the arm and dragged her to the car, giving her no time to react. He threw her to the back seat and drove away from the house. Don't worry, you will love your new home. Terrified, Lucy didn't try to escape. She was afraid Alex would hurt her. They eventually arrived to a faraway crossroads where Alex met with an older man of about 40 years old, corpulent and with an unkempt appearance. Let me introduce you to Christopher Gray. From now on, you work for him. Enjoy your new life. Alex was left counting a wad of bills while Lucy cried in the back of Christopher's moving van. Once they arrived to the house of her new master, Lucy was put in charge of everything. She had to work day and night without rest and her appearance started to deteriorate. Her skin turned pale with bags under her eyes covered in filth and with her beautiful blue dress now wrecked. She did all she could to not anger Christopher. She cleaned and cooked diligently while he only ate, drank and slept. However, Lucy wouldn't stop thinking about how to escape from that place. She knew that the main door was always locked and she needed time to search for the key. One day, she found Christopher's medications with pills that produce heavy sleepiness. She gradually put doses of the pills in Christopher's food until she found the perfect dose which would give her enough time to carry out her plan. Her birthday arrived and she couldn't stop thinking about how much she missed her family and friends. Thus, she decided that would be the day. After eating, Christopher fell asleep and she searched for the key all over the house. She checked all of the wardrobes, all of the drawers, but found nothing. However, she had a sudden idea. She went back to the living room where Christopher was sleeping and very carefully checked his pockets. She finally found a key, but it was smaller than the door's lock. She looked around and tried the key on one of the drawers in the living room chest. She opened it and found a bigger key inside and a photo album. It had a bunch of photos of young kids, all of them with a worried expression. She kept passing the pages and at the end found more photos of the same kids, but all martyred and mutilated. She dropped the book in terror and rushed towards the door with the key. She managed to open it and ran towards the forest, but the noise awoke Christopher, who ran after her. Almost out of breath, Lucy tripped and fell into a deep ditch. She looked around and horrified saw she was surrounded with the corpses of the kids in the photos. Some of the bodies were still decomposing, while others were now skeletons. Christopher caught up to her and dragged her back to the house. I hope you had fun with your new friends, cause you're gonna go back to them soon. She begged for forgiveness and implored for her life. Let's see if you learn not to put your paws where you shouldn't. He grabbed an axe and cut off one of her arms with a swift chop. She screamed in pain and to shut her up, he raised his axe once more and unloaded it right on her head, taking her life. After throwing her body back into the ditch, Christopher sat on his couch and turned on the TV to watch the news. The police had captured Alex as a suspect involved in Lucy's disappearance, and he had confessed. Soon, they'd be going after him. He rushed to his room to pack his things and flee from his house as soon as possible. Once ready, as he was about to leave, he saw the photo album on the floor in front of the house. You're a heartless evil man. You will regret what you've done. Don't think you will get away with this. He heard laughter, and when he raised his head, he saw in front of him the spirits of the kids he martyred. 
with Lucy in front of them. Suddenly, a person's screech started to sound and his eyes started to bleed. He went out of the house screaming in pain and saw himself surrounded by many police patrols which had arrived to detain him. He dropped to their feet, imploring, Make them shut up, please! Weeks later, we see him imprisoned in a padded cell of a mental asylum and wearing a straight jacket. Out of nowhere, he started to hear laughter and everything started again. Lucy approached him with a naked skull for a face, eyes that popped out of her eye sockets and sharp teeth. I told you that you wouldn't get away with this. The other kids grabbed him and she burst open his chest. She started raping out his entrails while Christopher choked in his own blood. Can you hear them laughing? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!